power, brilliant handling, incredible sound, and expressive styling that makes every fuel stop a car show and guarantees a front row valet parking spot. We're talking about three of the most desirable V8-powered supercars on the planet. The Chevrolet Corvette ZR1 is an American icon, a 638 horsepower supercharged rocket ship that's blunt but effective. The McLaren MP412C takes its cues from Formula One. The joint custody brainchild of Ron Dennis and Gordon Murray, it has a lightweight carbon fiber monocell tub and a 592 horsepower V8 that makes up with turbos what it lacks in displacement. And then there's the Ferrari 458 Italia. The only normally aspirated car here, whose 570 horsepower V8 shrieks with such ferocity that its DNA link to the company's Formula One effort is obvious. For a proper evaluation, we flogged them on a Death Valley road trip, lapped them at Spring Mountain Motorsports Ranch, and finally, through the generosity of Hennessy Performance Engineering, validated their power on a Dynojet chassis dyno. Our test wasn't without controversy, as the blood feud seen between Ferrari and McLaren in Formula One carried over to the production cars, with McLaren's Simon Andrew and Ferrari's Luca Torre circling each other like fighters in the octagon. We found each car spectacular in its own way. The Corvette has easy, effortless torque, fantastically sticky Michelin Pilot Sport Cup tires, and a chassis that's planned it yet still offers a reasonable ride. The Ferrari is high-strung, incredibly precise, and with a flick of its Manatino switch on the steering wheel can go from merely precise to race car levels of handling aggression. The McLaren dazzles with its looks, amazes with its twin turbo power, and can change handling personality with a flip of the switch as well. Its ride in the least aggressive mode has a wonderful velvety suppleness. For our timed laps, we enlisted the help of Steve Millen, IMSA GTS champion in 1992 and 94, where his Nissan 370Z was a regular fixture in the winner's circle. You know, Spring Mountain is quite a tight, twisty, narrow little track, and the Corvette feels big on the track, but it feels very, very secure. Um, when, when you're coming into a corner, you get, the front end really works well. It turns in very, very well. And um, I had it in PTM4, which has got the least amount of traction control, I believe, that the car can, can be set in. And, and it worked very well. You can just stand on the, on the gas and second gear out of corners. And with all that torque and horsepower, you'd think it'd wheel spin and so on, but the traction control controls that, of course. But um, the car's very, very stable and very secure. And so even if you arrive at a corner, which is a decreasing radius, and you're driving too quickly, um, you're never concerned that it's going to start to float off the road or something. It has a lot of security built into it. So, a uh, very neutral car. Steering has tremendous uh, feedback into it, and, and you feel very good turning in and out of corners. The brakes, the brakes are magic. The brakes are amazing, you know, they, and they stay consistent. You can, you can hammer on the brakes, lap after lap after lap, and they're always the same. So, um, I enjoyed that car, it was great. The thing is, with all that torque and power, you can run it in second gear or in third gear through corners, um, and it probably comes out to be the same lap time. So you can either use a tool or use a rear, whatever you feel best at going. The Ferrari was just fun. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun to drive that car. And you know, you really are, you're, it's like driving a single-seater racing car. The car sits very flat, doesn't have a lot of wheel travel, but it just, it loves to be driven aggressively. But it's a combination of aggressive and smooth, is what you need to do. So you, 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 you don't want to be afraid of it because it's not going to bite you, it's not going to hop out line and spin or something like that. But it's good if you can get the rear moving around and start to help rotate it into corners. And then stand on the gas and all over steer and slide it on the way out and it's just fun. But um, terrific steering. The steering, a lot of really good feel through the steering. The, the, the brakes are just, I think the brakes are really terrific. But it needs to be driven aggressively. In the first session when I drove the car, I was driving hard in the corners and standing on the gas, and I was getting a lot of understeer. So the second session I was more aggressive. 
I made the rear help rotate the car. And then, then I could get through a corner and come off very quick. So that was the way to do it. So it was just a blast to drive. And that engine, that engine's magnificent. And it's just screaming out to me, you know, rev me, rev me Harley, you know. So uh, good experience. This has been a really interesting test because we've got three wonderful sports cars. And the last two cars, the Ferrari and the McLaren, are really the same as far as mid-engine cars, similar size and so on, but they drive completely differently. You, for a start, you've got the twin-turbo McLaren versus the normally aspirated Ferrari. So the twin-turbo engines, it's got a ton of torque and power. And when you punch it coming off the corners, like it really punches you on the back, and so it's terrific. Um, car handles terrifically in fast corners. It's, it seems to have a lot more downforce at fast corners. I was having trouble getting off of the slow corners due to the amount of traction we had in the rear. We had it in a mode that had the rear wing up and had a lot of downforce on the rear of the car, and I think that actually hurts the front of the car coming off of corners. Um, but um, again, a really good chance. It's, it drives very differently because on, on the McLaren, you've got the the paddle shifters go with the steering wheel, whereas on the Ferrari, the paddle shifters stay in the same position because they're attached to the column. And so you've got to really think about that when you're going from car to car. But um, what a great experience, just wonderful cars. Each of these cars is absolutely world-class in performance and execution, but there can be only one winner. The McLaren is an admirable effort, a clean sheet supercar competing against adversaries that have decades of development behind them. The MP412C will be even quicker for 2013, with a computer reflash bumping output to 616 horsepower. The Corvette? costing at least $100,000 less than the other two. Its bang for the buck quotient is off the charts, but it's an older design that's truly in need of a freshening, despite the amazing supercharged engine and leech-like grip. Which leaves the Ferrari as our champion on the strengths of his handling precision, power delivery, spine-chilling sound, and an interior that's a feast of both function and aesthetics. The other cars have soul, certainly, but our winner from Marinello wears its heart on its sleeve.